Guys, welcome to Crypto Insight. I've been a professional options trader for 20 years. And about a year ago, I switched my focus from equity options to crypto options. Why? Because of the huge volatility and opportunity in the space. Trading Bitcoin has allowed me to multiply my capital in a safe way. And in these videos, I will give you the benefit of my experience and insight into how I'm reading the crypto vol market and using options to either hedge or speculate on future expected moves in the crypto space. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I hope you find this content useful. Thanks. <music> So what's been going on in crypto this week? Um, Bitcoin's been in a bit of a holding pattern, right? You can kind of see here that we're just kind of um, trading in a narrower and narrower channel here, right? Little triangle forming here. Hasn't really managed to get itself above that 36,000 area, uh, which I said was kind of where it needed to break to really fuel a bit of a move higher hasn't managed to do that. And, and now it's kind of threatening the, the kind of lower end of this, this ever tightening channel here. So definitely still potential for a downside break of this thing um, if it wants. Um, you know, in terms of some of the more fundamental metrics, if you can call them that in, in crypto, uh, the on-chain stuff that I've been paying a bit more attention to at the margin is probably more positive. Uh, you've had minor net positioning move from you know, minor distribution to minor accumulation from, from what the on-chain stuff is showing you. Um, you've also had, you know, volumes transferred uh, away from exchanges. So, you know, that's often a bit of a sign. If there's a lot of, um, if there's a lot of uh, Bitcoin coming onto exchanges, it's, it's because people want to then move it to stable coins or move it out of Bitcoin, basically. If they take it off exchanges, they're, they're moving it to cold storage and things like that. So they're going to be longer term holders, right? So when you see a lot of flows off exchange, it's kind of signaling that, 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 that those Bitcoins are going into stronger hands that are likely to just hodl uh, for a longer period of time, right? So, and that's fundamentally quite a bullish thing if people are just parking them away from exchanges and then that takes the supply, liquid supply that's available in exchanges that takes that supply down, which means as other buyers come in, it's more likely to have a positive price impact. So that's kind of what's been going on on chain. You've also seen a hash rate recovery, um, still a long way to go, but after the China impact and the destruction in the hash rate of, of roughly 55%, um, we, we have recouped uh, some of that, right? So we recouped about a third of that in terms of hash rate. So, so you know, that again, at the margin is, is positive. Um, but then, you know, as the volatility of the spot, as you can clearly see from this chart, has been coming down, you, you've had volumes on options coming down pretty dramatically as well. Yeah, this kind of shows the option volumes. So as Bitcoin kind of exploded last year above 20,000, options volume, volumes also exploded. So these are the, the orange bars going up to our highs of, you know, around $13 billion of option volumes trading. Um, and then as we've come back down, that has collapsed down to about 4.4 4, 4 billion, right? So quite a decent um, pullback in option volumes there, basically, right? Alongside general volatility in the market compressing. Now, um, so, you know, we have seen a collapse in realized vol. We've also seen a collapse in implied vol. So if we zoom in on, on some of the kind of volatility analytics on crypto, and we compare kind of what the vault, what that surface in July has done over the last couple of weeks. So you can see that quite a major compression. So at the money vol is kind of around here, around 32 to 35. At the money vol collapsing, upside vol collapsing. Um, and that, that, you know, you tend to see that, and that happened from the last two weeks. So post June expiry, two weeks on from June expiry, you've seen a collapse in the front end here suggesting that people have been selling July and particularly been selling kind of upside in July, yeah? 
So, so you know, the usual kind of overwriting that you get from institutions who are long only, they're willing to sell calls against it. That kind of leads to this supply and this compression of upside vol. And we're definitely seeing that in the July surface basis. That kind of confirms that the flows that we're kind of seeing suggest that there's been a fair amount of overwriting in July. And we've got open interest in 40 to 45 region, which is quite high. That suggests that that's cool selling at the margin. Yeah. If you then look at longer dated part of the surface, say December, it, it tells a bit of a different story, right? Over the last two weeks. So you've had at the money vol compression as you'd expect, but it's much smaller, right? So rather than say the 20 vol points drop that we've seen in July, You've only had about a five vol point drop in December from 93 to 87. But look at what's going on on the upside, right? So the bright green is today versus the dark green was two weeks ago. So all of these, there's an inflection point here above kind of 70,000 where all of the options above 70,000, particularly when we get up to this 150 to 200,000 strike area in December, the vol on this stuff has gone up. By, a, by about 10 vol points, right? So that's showing that, whereas at the monies are getting sold off, there's a lot of demand coming in for that way out of the money upside stuff, right? So signaling that, yes, whilst the short-term expectations are for the market to remain range bound, maybe over the summer, into year end, people are willing to pay up for some upside to get some participation for a resumption of the rally later on in the year. That's what the option surface is kind of potentially uh, indicating yeah so that's um where we are in terms of what the if we drill down into the surface now if we look at what the SKU is doing across different expiries let me share this um it's probably the best one to share so here you can see that now the the the, the, the kind of the top ones kind of show me the short-term SKU metrics, right? So that's 30 day and seven day. So the bright green is seven day, the gray is 30 day. And, and whereas, you know, they were uh, trading for about 20 vols over for puts, you can see now they're down to about only eight vols over for puts, basically. So, so that, that is clearly a sign the options market is saying that short-term crash risk in crypto is subsiding, right? According to the, what the SKU is telling us, basically, okay? So for now, the skew is suggesting there's not as much of a panic for an imminent crash in crypto. Okay. If you then look at the longer term skews, like the 90 day and the, the, the longer day, the six month stuff, year end stuff, you can see there's a clear skew for calls, right? So on the, on the 30 day, on the 90 day stuff, not so much, it's quite neutral, which is the orange line. But on the, on the longer dated stuff, you've got a clear skew, maybe six vol, five or six vol over for call options. So again, that reflected in that December curve that I showed you that there's definitely a demand for longer dated call options, basically, right? So people are looking past the short-term pain that we may still need to endure. And, and, and they're willing to pay up for that upside participation, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, if we look, have a look at the term structure and kind of see what that's been doing uh, here, if I share this one expand this one so i've just i've kind of put bitcoin and ethereum term structure side by side here right so again over the last two weeks you can see what the curve's done bitcoin curve was completely flat around 95 collapsed um that front end's hit about 70 now where the realize was about 60 um so a complete collapse into contango for the bitcoin term structure as you would expect when vols are kind of softening um Ethereum term structure, on the other hand, same sort of story, but not quite as dramatic, right? So front end, more like 85 to 90 region, holding a bit of a premium to Bitcoin, still going into Contango, uh, but just not quite as steep. And, and that makes sense because the realized volume of Ethereum is still a bit higher. And, you know, Ethereum tends to hold a bit of a vol premium over Bitcoin. So right now it's trading at about 10 to 15 vol point premium, which is, you know, reasonable. Um, and there's a bit of event risk in Ethereum, right? We all know about this upgrade, the EIP 1559 upgrade that's due and, and the date has kind of been confirmed to be early August. That's the catalyst potentially to give us some more vol around Ethereum. It, it may not even be an upside catalyst, right? It may be a disappointment, sell the, sell the news type thing and give us some downside volatility. But 
likelihood is it's not going to just go by without any volatility, right? So um, for those of you who saw my sort of real vision video yesterday, you know, the spread between Ethereum and Bitcoin is, is the thing that I like to track. Let me bring it up. Um, so we bring up the, the cross rate, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. You know, what, what has happened, it, it bounced off that key support twice at 0 0.055. Uh, had a healthy bounce there, drifting a bit lower again. Who knows if we're going to test for a third time. But the idea being that, you know, that if that thing was to break this downward sloping trend line, then there's potentially a lot of upside in Ethereum relative to Bitcoin, if it can get above that. And, and would that upgrade maybe give us the catalyst for that type of move? That's the suggestion, right? You, all go, you guys all, all know how I'm playing that. I've been buying calls in Ethereum and selling calls in Bitcoin to fund it. And I see that as, you know, as close to a free option as I'm going to get to play this potential trade in Ethereum versus Bitcoin. If it was to materialize, I'm taking the other side of the view that I don't think Bitcoin's going to rally by itself. I think if Bitcoin does rally, it's going to take ETH with it. ETH's going to have a higher beta and ETH has got the catalyst. And, and that's the risk I'm willing to take. Whereas I'm not, I don't have as high conviction that I just want to throw a load of premium on the fire and buy a load of, I've already got crypto exposure. I don't need to add more premium to participate in the Ethereum move. Um, especially because I think the macro setup is starting to look a little bit precarious and we could easily have a dollar spike and a macro sell off, which would probably not bode that great for crypto as a whole and both Bitcoin and Ethereum could sell off. And in the scenario that happens, I won't take any damage really on my spread trade because both the premiums will just go to zero basically. So that's how I'm playing it. I'm using August options and September options to play it. Even though the spread is a little bit wider than I would like at around 15 vol points, I actually take some comfort in that, knowing that the market is most likely short options, short call options on Ethereum upside. So should we get the rally, that could trigger a bit of a gamma squeeze in the likes that we see in some of those retail, retail names, some of those meme stocks. Maybe we get an Ethereum squeeze in a similar sort of vein to that if we do get the, the catalyst of the upgrade making us rally, basically. Right. So that, that's the theory. That's why I'm doing the trade. Uh, you guys know about that. Those are those of you who are part of the community and part of the chat group. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel. Give the video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'd also encourage you to sign up for a free trial to our live and interactive Macro Insight Zoom call. As part of our trading community, as well as the call, you'll also get access to our Telegram chat and our weekly market reports. To find out more, you can also connect with us on the socials. All the links are at our website, www options-insight.com. Thanks.